Hey guys, welcome to Router Two Brief. Now, I've done a video before on deep versus shallow sand beds. I'm gonna go into a little more detail for those of you who are curious on it. What's the difference? And should you go with a deep sand bed or a shallow sand bed? So I got a question from Mindboggle100. Steve, what's your opinion on running a deep sand bed? I've read a lot of conflicting discussion on the benefits versus the negatives. It would seem that a deep sand bed can process nitrates to very low levels naturally. This seems like a great benefit to me. Vocal critics seem to suggest that long term the bed becomes a detrimental nutrient sink. I know from your other videos like me you prefer dry rock and I'll get into that too. Now it seems to be quite the single biggest drawback since most live rock exports marine inverts into the sand bed. Not so with dry rock. I live, I live in England, UK, and unfortunately it is far harder to get live stock here, including marine critters such as detrivores for a DSB. Americans, bless you all, not all of them, well, let me just put that in, a lot of people are trash, except my subscribers, that's why I prefer animals. Anyway, thank you, and bless you guys as well. I love your guys' accent, I wish I had an accent. Americans are spoiled rotten for sources of marine livestock. Yes, we're spoiled rotten with a lot of things because the media tells us what to buy and most of us buy it whether we need it or not. Stupid. Anyway, Steve, I'd love to hear your opinion as you are a deep thinker, a deep thinking reefer, and a killer in guitar as a bonus. Oh, that's so nice of you. I'm not going to play for you, but check out my other YouTube channels guitar playing and camera production and the Joker impression. Why so serious? Why so serious? Um, as a side note, I just did a quick YouTube video on the new Avengers film Endgame and it's doing well. And I, it's some of my best work with the voiceover from the Joker. It's pretty funny. Check out the video description for those channels. A shallow sand bed, which is generally one to three inches deep or a deep sand bed, which is three to eight inches or more. That's what she said, by the way. So when I've had my aquariums, I had a shallow sand bed of <clears throat> one to two inches. A sand bed not only makes your aquarium look nice, and it makes it look like part of the ocean, and the lighting that you have from above bounces off of it and reflects back up just like snow outside, to help brighten the tank up, there's a big difference versus no sand bed and sand bed. Who would have no sand? I did for about a year. And it was much easier to clean the tank because you just vacuum everything up. All the uneaten food and all the fish waste. Very easy to do. I didn't mind the looks of it, but now that I have sand again, I really missed it. And a shallow said sand bed is good for the looks of the tank. It's good to house extra bacteria, which your tank needs to thrive because bacteria breaks down all the waste and all the ammonia, which is fish urine. And it goes through the nitrogen cycle. It goes from ammonia to nitrites that get broken down to nitrates that get exported through various methods out of your tank through water changes, a protein skimmer. We'll go through that in other videos. Don't let all that concern you. Those new to the hobby, you're, you're thinking, and I did too, oh, nitrites, nitrates, I, I, how do you know this? Look, don't worry about it. You'll get it. <clears throat> it's no problem. Right here from the base of the tank to the top is about an inch, inch and a half. There's barely any sand coming to the top of this rim. So I'd say right about here is an inch and a half of sand. Here where it comes up, this is about an inch and this is two inches. So I have a three inch sand bed here. I'd like to get two more inches making it at least five. So there will be less swim space for my fish. That's a downside to a deeper sand bed. I'll move this power head up maybe a couple inches after the sand bed is done. In the back there you can see the sand is probably five inches. 
So that's how I want the whole tank to be, which means I've lost, you know, five inches of swim space for the fish. No big deal. They don't really swim up and down. Fish swim left to right, which is one reason I got the six foot long, 125 gallon tank. So a shallow sand bed houses the beneficial bacteria. Bacteria is a single cell organism. It could be good, it could be bad, it could cause sickness. In the case of your aquarium, it's good. And it gets rid of all the bad things and helps your fish thrive. So on every grain of sand, bacteria is living. You can imagine how many grains of sand are in your aquarium. Bacteria also lives on your glass, in your sump, in your filtration, in the water column, on your rocks. That's why they call rocks live rock because bacteria is living on the rock. They call it a live rock. You can buy live rock with bacteria already on it when you're starting an aquarium. You can buy live rock from your fish store or reef store. I don't like to do that. I like to buy dry rock because you never know what parasites are going to come in from that water from the aquarium store, the fish store, the reef store. So I like to start with dry rock and let the bacteria populate on its own naturally. Videos on how to do that in my playlist on how to start a saltwater aquarium tank. So that's what a one to two inch sand bed does. When you vacuum your sand bed once a week or however, however often you want to do it, and you do a water change once a week. I do a 10% water change once a week. I've got a 125 gallon aquarium with like 40 gallons of sumps underneath. So I only do a 10 gallons to 15 gallons a week. It's good enough for me. And part of that includes vacuuming the sand bed. When I started out, I would vacuum down into the sand bed a third at a time. Next week I would vacuum the second third. Next week I would vacuum the third third. That's okay, but know this. You are removing some of the bacteria or a lot of the bacteria and all the little critters that live in that sand bed like amphipods and copepods and the beneficial bacteria that's used to make your tank thrive. Will it hurt your tank? Not really, but you're getting rid of life that's necessary for this aquarium to thrive. So what you should do when you vacuum, you just vacuum over the very top of the sand bed, barely touching it, just enough to get the uneaten fish food and fish waste, because I go to the bathroom, out of there. The fish waste and fish food that gets buried deeper and deeper into the sand bed, that is going to be hard to get rid of, so you're going to rely on your sand sifters, like your sand sifter goby fish, or your hermit crabs, or your starfish, those guys are going to take care of the stuff beneath the sand, and they're going to sift the sand to clean your sand. That's where a deep sand bed comes in. Now, a deep sand bed that is three inches or more, <clears throat> three to eight inches or deeper, is beneficial because you've got your anaerobic bacteria and your aerobic bacteria. The anaerobic bacteria lives deeper in the deep sand bed where there is no oxygen, which is beyond three inches. And this is especially true if you have a fine sand bed. There's different levels of sand grain, and if you're going to have a deep sand bed, you want to have a fine sand grain, because a thicker sand grain or crushed coral, which I never recommend crushed coral, because it's crushed coral. And there's all little pockets inside the crushed coral where fish waste and food can settle and you won't be able to get it out. And it will cause a nitrate problem and your tank will have problems. So get the finest sand possible. And when you use a fine sand, it could blow all over your tank. Because it's like, like a powdery, for lack of better words. It's not that thin, but you know what I'm talking about. If you have a thin sand and you're having problems with that, just adjust your water flow so it doesn't blow the sand all over the place. That's what I do. I don't have any power heads pointing right down to the sand. All right? I use the Carib Sea Fiji Pink. It's a finer sand. It looks awesome. And that's what you use for a deep sand bed. Which 
I have links in the video description below for the gear I use, including the sand. Um, <clears throat> so for a deeper sand bed, the first three inches is going to be where the bacteria lives to get rid of all the ammonia and nitrites and nitrates. Three inches and deeper, that food is going to settle just like fossils for dinosaurs, right? Over time, it's going to get deeper and deeper down into the earth, deeper and deeper down into the sand. So all the microorganisms that live deep in the sand, including your starfish that sift through it and your gobies, they're going to get rid of all that stuff. And that deep sand bed, you're going to see it changing colors against the glass. It's going to go from a nice white to a pink and a black. That's everything breaking down and the bacteria doing its work. The deeper you go in the sand, the less oxygen there is to the point where there's no oxygen. And that's where the anaerobic bacteria lives. They're going to feed off that stuff and that's how your nitrates are going to get lowered as well. You don't want to have any nitrates in your tank. And a lot of us struggle with nitrates in the tank because it goes from ammonia to nitrites to nitrates. You want to have your nitrates as close to zero as possible. Ammonia, fish urine, always zero, or your fish will die. It's toxic, they'll suffocate, they'll die. Um, <clears throat> the nitrates are bad for your corals, so you want to have as close to zero as possible. How do you get rid of nitrates? You do water changes, you feed your fish less. You have a deep sand bed that can break down those nitrates deep down. And as that sand bed matures, all that nasty stuff, uneaten fish food and fish waste, it's going to get eaten by the bacteria that lives in the very low oxygen levels of that deep sand bed. That's what a good, sand, a good deep sand bed is for. The negative against this deep sand bed is if you disturb that sand bed, if you stir that deep sand bed deep, if you vacuum deep, you could release pockets of nitrogen gas that are stored deep within. And when you release those, it will be bad for your tank. All right. Another thing that he mentioned in the comment is a deep sand bed over time can turn toxic because it will turn into a nitrate factory, a nitrate sink, which means you've got so many bad things buried deep within that sand bed that you don't have enough organisms to eat them or digest them or devour them in time. So you're getting nitrates building faster than the organisms can get rid of them. So you're gonna have nitrogen gases releasing into your tank you're going to have all kinds of problems, pockets of nitrogen gas releasing in your aquarium. So that's where a deep sand bed isn't that good. Well, I'm going to go with a deep sand bed because I like the way it looks. It's a really great source of biological filtration to break down that fish waste and fish food, and I'm not going to disturb it. Which one should you go with? That's up to you. If you just like the look of a sand bed and you want to have good maintenance and you want to just have some sand sifting gobies or a starfish, get one to two inch sand bed. I've done that and I love it. I'm going to go for the deep sand bed. I'm going to add sand over time. Part of the tank is two inches. Another part of the tank is half an inch to an inch and I've got another hundred pounds coming. I got it on Amazon for cheap. Any questions you have, please comment and I'll answer them and viewers will answer them. Also join our Facebook group, links to that as well, for outstanding support and help from our great community. There's no jerks allowed. Whether you're starting out on the first day or you've been doing this for 10 years. And anybody who is jerky they're banned right away on this channel or the Facebook group. There's no such thing as a stupid question and we don't tolerate it. By the way, I want to say a special thanks to all of you subscribers who make this channel what it is. It's fun. It's entertaining. I'll put corals in here eventually again. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.